We also have Australian comedian Tim Mitchin here with us, but did you know he was actually born in Northampton? They're here with us. OK, right, our first guest said of himself, I'm a good musician for a comedian and I'm a good comedian for a musician, but we think he is both brilliantly funny and an excellent musician. Only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. Only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. Your love is one in a million. You couldn't buy it at any price. But of the 9.99900,000 other possible love, statistically, some of them would be equally nice. There you go, good end. <laughs> yeah. so, that was from his Ready for This tour. So welcome to St. the Weekend. Hi, thanks for having me on something for the weekend. <laughs> now, you're not going to swear on this show, are you, Tim? <laughs> no, uh, no. Because I heard yesterday that you went on radio twice and swore, but you didn't think you were... Don't mention the word, please. No, I won't. No, 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 no I, I, it was absolutely terrible. It was one of those things, the more people tell you... It's like when you're driving along going, I, I'm not going to hit that pole, I'm not going to hit that pole, and inevitably you'll hit the pole. I was too... People kept telling me. I, it was a very, very benign word, but I understand now that it's not for the beeb. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I usually am very good at that. People sometimes say, because there's a bit of swearing in my, in my live shows, but when I do other work, people say, oh, how was it trying to stop swearing? And uh, th there's language that's appropriate for different places yeah, at different times, yeah. but my Australianism sometimes uh, uh, gets in the way of do, um, do you protocol. Live, do you live over there now or over here? Where no, are you here in North London for the last four and a half years. Yeah. Four and a half okay. years, mm. OK. Uh, like, so, for anyone who doesn't know what you do, can you explain what your act is? It's comedy songs and... and yeah. yeah, it's kind of glorified cabaret, I suppose, but it's, it's got a bit stupid. So, <laughs> usually, like that uh, footage you just showed, it's, I, I play piano and uh, sing songs and they tend to be pretty satirical. And, and uh, I guess if you think of Tom Lehrer or Richard Stilgo in the past and then... Fast forward thirty Richard years. Still and, go. <laughs> yeah, but, but then, but then I talk about God and sex and death, and I talk about. I'm sort of. I take a lot of big ideas and make them stupid. Yeah. Um, what, what came first, the music? Did you realise you were a talented musician or comedy? Comedy, very, very late. It's very, very recent really? for me. So I started doing comedy. Uh, doing comedy at, in, at 29 or something. So early on, you was writing songwriter, I presume. Yeah, I, I was writing songs from about 11. I started writing music for theatre at about 17, and I played in endless bands, everything from jazz to disco and top 40. And I've written music for theatre, and I was an actor, and uh, written bits and pieces of sketch and stuff like that. But I hadn't really even thought about comedy. I think somewhere in my mid-twenties I thought, oh, I could do a bit of comedy and thought, that's too scary. <laughs> and then in this roundabout way I suddenly found myself focusing on my satirical songs, which I always wrote compulsively, and realised that if I just chatted in between songs people seemed to keep laughing and suddenly I'm, I'm doing that as Huge. a job. Huge! You won the, uh, yeah, you won the uh, um, Perrier Comedy Award at Edinburgh. Yeah? New, the best newcomer when yeah. I first started in 2005, yeah. yeah. And now I've got an orchestra and I'm yeah. touring the country with an orchestra. So, so like a 55 piece orchestra. Yeah. I mean, that's because we were talking earlier and we were saying that a lot of comedians go out on the road with a mic and a table and a yeah. bottle of water. So you, you're putting a lot into your tour, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, it's, it's certainly economically less. I know. <laughs> we, I didn't like to say that, but, you know, a lot of people wouldn't make that decision based well, that they're spending out a lot on their show. Yeah, I, I, I agree. That is a bit stupid, especially you get to that point where you, um, you're getting good audiences and that's definitely the time to cash in. But for me... Uh, it really is just an yeah. opportunity to do something different. And, and I think people appreciate that, uh, to come in if you you get a chance to see something yeah. different. I think Especially when you're doing back. big rooms. Yeah. I, I, I have absolute respect for the big comedians who do the hand of the mic and the two big screens and Wembley Stadium or whatever, That that's fine. But when I discussed with my promoters about doing arenas and, and those sorts of big rooms, I I was adamant that I was going to take the challenge of creating a show that almost belonged in an arena. I, yeah. I, I so what's, different to, what's different to the normal stuff, then? It's just bigger scale? Of, well, of, of... I, I wrote um, seven of the songs in my new show. I, I was aware people would 
uh, my fans and stuff would be interested in hearing orchestrated versions of some of those old songs, but I also wanted to take the challenge of writing to really utilise the orchestra. Right, a lot of people okay. do, oh, yeah. there's the orchestra in the background and these are my songs and it might as well be a couple of keyboards in the background. But I've written songs that uh, the, the players really have to play and the spotlight's definitely on so, them at times. So you're kind of living out of fantasy in a way, aren't you? Because totally. you're, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> no, I've made it. Yeah, give me an the orchestra. the whole show starts with a song about exactly that. Does about it? how I'm a rock star now <laughs> and I can do exactly what but I want. It's really powerful, though. A 55-piece orchestra is pretty powerful being on stage with it and watching it. Yeah, and it's a daunting. huge joy for me. I, I was really worried about it because I thought, all oh, these amazing players and I'm this idiot. <laughs> like I said, I'm a good musician for a comedian. Uh, but it's been an absolute pleasure playing with these yeah. amazing people. And I'm obsessed about sound and things, so we've <laughs> flown in a sound system from Holland and, and apart from it being silly and comic and satirical and a bit yeah. dark and stuff, it's also as good as... I think as good as you'll hear any orchestra in any genre in an arena. We've worked really hard to make it go bang. Yeah. So yeah. Brilliant. That's so. modestly my, my play. <laughs> so, this is the best thing you've ever had in any. Ever. <laughs> so so yeah, you know, you're 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 you you you're getting this great big orchestra. Are you gonna start wearing shoes now? Are you gonna stay barefoot? No. I'm not stupid. I'm not going to start wearing shoes. No. <laughs> I, 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 don't you ever get splinters, Tim? I, I don't. I, actually, I, I have stood on a few stray screws and stuff in theatres, especially when I first started and I was playing small theatres and I'd wander around the stage barefoot very sensibly to see if there are any stray screws. And, uh, <laughs> and the theatre ops would get so paranoid about me doing that, I took to um, walking around with a sort of personal contract to say... You know, you're indemnified from any suing if I step on something. It's my choice, signed Tim Minchin, because people go, you can't walk around this theatre in bare feet. <laughs> but <laughs> it's just something I started doing and I enjoy performing. In Your look is, is quite identifiable. Did you create this? Did you sit down or did it just naturally happen? A bit of eyeliner, a bit yeah. of kind of funky hair. Was this just you or did you think, no, I need a look? It was, it was a bit of both. It was kind of organic to start with. I started wearing a bit of eyeliner because I was very aware that uh, when your hands are trapped, when you're really trying to express ideas, this is all you've got. Whereas most comedians will... Uh, and so I sort of started wearing a theatre amount of makeup, the sort of amount of makeup I'm wearing now to just make sure people could see my face. And then... At some point, I started taking my shoes off, I think, just to make myself feel more relaxed. This is when I was playing in 40-seat cabaret venues yeah. in Melbourne. And then I think there was a bit of a conscious choice a bit after that where I thought it'd be quite fun Play just to dress up more. like a rock star and, and, and you clash this sort of idea of the rock star, the, the Cure or Bowie or whatever, against a, a guy basically doing nerdy songs about... <laughs> about empiricism on a piano, which is kind of what my show <laughs> Underneath It All is about. And it, so sort of that clash. And then you add an orchestra and suddenly it's, it's this kind of confusion of genres and it allows you to say lots of stuff. People are sitting there going, what am I watching? Yeah, which is, isn't <laughs> that a brilliant... I love what that idea. What is this? I love that idea. People who don't know much about me just go... What is what, it? What, but why, you... why would you do that? <laughs> why would you have an orchestra What's for this? going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah. All right, well, listen, uh, Tim Minchin will be staying with us to uh, play with some gadgets in some things for the weekend and you're also cooking treacle tart and custard with Simon oh. Amelo. Yeah, you oh. are. Hey, oh, That'll be interesting. Oh. That, that, that beats an orchestra. Right, so if you have questions... So I'll start plating up one there. And we have two little fellas like that. Then we've got some more lime on there. All right, then we've got some... Yeah, we're Sweating. good! Sweating. Yeah, Mate. Yeah. Sweating, you too. Yeah, we kind of, you know, we're running over a little bit. All morning I've been really looking forward to the guacamole, hasn't it? I know. We're <laughs> just we're letting you down to <laughs> going, all right? As long as the guacamole's all right, I'll be happy. It's not working, Simon. As long as no one nuts up the guacamole. Here's the key. I'm going to add a little bit of water into that to break it down. We'll get enough out of that. That'll do me. OK. Obviously, <laughs> blend that <laughs> smoother. Taste-wise, though, it will still taste... Well, it's going to taste like avocados with tomatoes, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. <laughs> This, Maybe avoid the guacamole. I'm, so, I'm yeah. so close to walking off. Uh, it's just so sorry. <laughs> it's an absolute nightmare. <laughs> on, on your list, everything you said yeah. is guacamole. On my right, right, right. So, yeah. so sorry. Go for that. Go, um, for the, go for the rabbit. We'll put this one back on. <laughs> uh, go on, please, Tim. Do you want to try right. some of this? Just don't hold your breath with the gnocchi at the end of the show. Do you want to eat the rabbit? You go for the rabbit, What's though. wrong with the rabbit? I just yeah. don't fancy it. All the rabbits out there watching will be offended that I... you don't want to eat them. Well, maybe. <laughs> I'll, I'll live with it. 
Don't want to make enemies uh, of the rabbit. What are we making for dessert, no. Simon? We're doing classic treacle tart. Oh, wow, you've gone. I'd definitely the be tasting that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, we've nearly got guacamole. <gasps> mm. Good. That's nice. Good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I take this? Oh. Yeah? No? <laughs> yeah. Okay, go to our website, bbc.co.uk slash something for the weekend to find all of today's recipes. All right, uh, and don't forget to email in or tweet any questions you want to uh, Arlene Phillips or Tim mention, yeah. But now Caroline Quentin is back on our TVs with her on-screen family in the life of Riley. Mm. <laughs> 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 All that uh, oh, still to sweet. come, but now Tim Minchin uh, is with us uh, in the kitchen. Uh, are you any good at cooking? Uh, well, um, no. You've I got don't kids. Do, you I must don't... cook for your kids, don't you? No, I never cook for my children. Well, what are they, they eating? Nothing? They cook for me. Uh, <laughs> How old are they? Four and two. Oh, perfect. It's awful. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing's awful. I've stopped cooking a while ago. I think it used to be a creative outlet for me, and now I'm writing so much. I come home and I don't want to be creative at all. I, I just want to stop. Mm. So, uh... I ring the local Japanese takeaway. And as you're from Australia, what part of Australia are you from? Perth. Uh, as you're from Perth, um, beetroot. Do you have it on burgers? We were discussing this on the show the other day. Australia. I have. Um, I have come around to beetroot, but I'm not. I'm not a beetroot obsessive. But it's a big thing in Australia, isn't it? On well, burgers. that's like that's the same sort of thing that you guys think that Jason Donovan is a big thing in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, the he's, things that you think not. are quintessentially he's Australian not. are actually not. Oh. He's a big thing, but he's not not in Australia. Not as big as beetroot. Well, not as big as beetroot. Beetroot uh, puts out more singles. Mm. Yeah. All right. All right, so we're, um, we're going to, with, with a non cook, we're going yep. to make a trickle top, which is quite easy. Yep. So we're making yep. a custard as well. We've got some milk that's just coming to simmering point. That. You've dropped it on the floor, apparently. So well, egg yolk, vanilla, sugar, uh -huh. ground ginger, lemon, uh -huh. breadcrumbs, golden syrup. Are you sure? And we're going to make pastry first of all, Tim, which will be an education for you. So we've got flour, we've got icing sugar, butter, a little bit of milk, and an egg. So first job. Took, took all the butter into there and just start rubbing them Are you in. Are serious? Yeah, so it's kind of, it's a, it's a gentle kind of teasing of the butter and flour together. Oh, I just licked my hand. <laughs> oh, no, it's not it. Health and safety, already. Tim. Yay. Yeah, rock and roll. Well on caught, Wayne. You threw that into the mid-distance <laughs> then, didn't you? you didn't There's care. no one there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I pretend I have minders. Yeah. <laughs> so you rub that, you can be quite gentle. It's, it's that kind of... That kind of movement. Can you it's not do tickling. that? It's making me feel uncomfortable. Because <laughs> you're, you're now you're, you're heavy-handed. You'll your pastry will be disastrous. I'm not heavy-handed. There you are. You're, I am. You're, imagine it's kind of it's a delicate... That's it. Yeah. That's beautiful. Tickle, this is like, going to take forever. Like, We're like, in a hurry. Like then. you're tickling the piano. Yeah. yeah. Really? It, matter, it actually would yeah. damage your pastry to try and do this yeah. too quickly. Yeah. Well, j just gently. It's about, uh, to be technical, it's about stretching gluten in the flour. So if you work it too hard, you stretch gluten and your pastry's going to be... Uh, I've heavy. always wondered how, how to stretch gluten. Yeah. I, I've <laughs> spent my life thinking this, this gluten is too tight. I so now some, we add. I need some gluten <laughs> yoga. I some sugar <laughs> and now. an egg. And just keep doing the same thing. It's a nice feeling. <laughs> and what, now what we're trying to do... Embrace it, Tim. ...is to get, this, yeah. ah, is to get no, this together it. so it comes into a dough. So it mm. will How good a piano are you? Are you? I mean, I know nothing about playing instruments. Are you, are, you a, are, you, are, you a, are you a top pianist? Would you make it into an orchestra yourself? No way. I can't read music. I, I'm, a, oh. I'm a good hack. I, I'm, I'm getting better, actually, weirdly. I was... Um, I, I'm mostly self-taught. I, I did up to grade two as a child and then did a little bit of study in my late teens. But um, comedy has made me a better pianist because... Um, because I used to play in cover bands and stuff and it wasn't very challenging and now I have to play for two hours on yeah. my own every night on a grand piano and it's made me better. And you find as well, because you, you, you're an ambitious human being, that you want to get better anyway, just as a, as a person. You think, you know, um, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it well. I think I'm more That's ambitious great. about... You can have a rinse of your hands now. I'm, I'm ambitious about songwriting and my playing gets dragged along by my songwriting ambition. There you go. Do you practice a lot every night? No, I've never practised in my life. I've literally never practised. I just write songs and muck around until I can play them. Really? So, kids, if you want to be a musician like me... <laughs> <laughs> don't practise. Don't practise. Yeah. OK, you're, give you're the hands of we'll have to just, certainly right, have so. to play for a lot of hours. So, so, basically, this kind of comes together as a dough. Okay. Have I ruined it? Well, we just kind of overworked well, no, it see, slightly. But now, but you're being, now you're being aggressive right. with it, which is what you told Tim. I'll you see, now, you see, but now we've got it together. It's now formed into a dough. And now it's at early stages. Okay, so yeah, so it comes together as a dough. 
Okay. Like that. Don't ever make me do that again. That's and there, I'm sorry. <laughs> it will never happen again. Then we cover it, we chill it, we roll it out, and then we do what we call bake it blind. So you line the case, you fill it with baking beads and oh, a bit I've of. I've got a good job, I did. Yeah, yeah that's the one that well, we did that. before. Yeah. And then that's what we end up with. Okay, so. The